All right, welcome to the Ball and Breakfast podcast. I'm Patrick Miller, along with uh, Wayne Poix. Um, recapping last episode, we went over the quarterback carousel, um, talking about all the movement that's been happening in the NFL with some of your favorite quarterbacks. Um, you know, overall, this show is one that's going to focus on all of our favorite professional sports, from football to basketball to baseball. We'll toss in some college as well. Um, if you could... Look out for us. We're now currently on social media. We're really proud about that. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, and Anchor as well. Um, we'll be on Apple pretty soon. We'll let you know uh, through social media. At least for last episode, going over the quarterbacks, uh, there was a lot of movement. We made some predictions that got updated pretty quickly throughout last week, so we just wanted to cover our bases first. Um We all saw the news late last week that Deshaun Watson was officially traded to the Cleveland Browns. Um, You know, he's still going through his 22 civil lawsuits for sexual harassment, other allegations. Um, Going to Cleveland, the Houston Texans got back three first round picks, a second, a fourth. And I believe that the Browns also collected a fifth round pick with Deshaun. Um, Right after that, they signed him to a five-year deal for $230 million, uh, eye-popping numbers for a guy with undeniable talent, but also a lot of uh, baggage coming with him to uh, the mistake by the lake. So uh, just want to see what Wayne thinks of this deal. Um, There are two sides to to the Cleveland story, as we all know, with Watson and uh, the incumbent. So I'll let Wayne take it, you know, from here, um, but just... How'd you feel about that when it first uh, dropped on the news? I mean, I'm shocked, but I'm like, you know, the Cleveland Browns, I feel like they're just the most entertaining, like, uh, you know, thing over there kind of, you know, I mean, they, they had the whole movie draft day with regards to all that, just all the craziness. So, um, I mean, I, 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 I kind of admire uh, the Browns going all YOLO about this, you know, it's like, okay, we have, you know, uh, we have probably one of the most talented rosters overall uh and some decent cap space so they just went all in basically on this um no first rounders uh, basically uh, i mean uh, for the next couple years or something like that so um like that's a pretty significant haul uh for the texans i'd say and then they still got davis mills so but with the browns it's like that's that's that was a very very surprising but bold move so good on good on them i think for trying all that be interesting what happens to see if they get Jarvis Landy Landry back though. I know it was like, oh, I'm out. I was like, well, I don't know about this anymore. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited uh, to see what happens and unfolds there, but you know, I wanted the bears to get Watson. I think he's ultra talented and everything like that. Um, obviously with all the baggage, but um, you know, uh, they have the roster basically every, all the talent around them. So it's great. Good that they're able to grab, you know, a franchise quarterback like Watson, the the guaranteed money is outrageous. <laughs> I think that was like, holy cow. Um, so what was the guaranteed money? Do you remember what the figure was? I think it was, was it like close to like 200 million or something like that. Or was it 200 million? Like, like, holy so, cow. Wow. Yeah. Of the 230 that there was a, like almost 90% of that's guaranteed. It was like mostly guaranteed something wow. ridiculous like that. So, um, and that, that, I think I think if I remember correctly, Watson denied them first, but then I think the Browns were like, "Well, how about you know, how about a little <laughs> bit of something, something here?" So, um, I mean, I think it's great for the Browns. So we'll see what happens, though. Uh, you know, they are the Browns; they're never uh, never going to disappoint us in, in that sense. Uh, but you know, they got Cooper, they got that line, they got a really talented defense. So. Um, I mean, it's hard to kind of go against it, but then it's like, how can the brand screw this up? So what are your thoughts? So I have one quick question before I I put my thoughts out there, but were you thinking when the Watson, you know, rumors were going around, would you have liked to have seen the bears toss the Texans, Justin Fields in something for Deshaun Watson currently? Yeah, I, I did think about that, but yeah, I think, I think Justin Fields is the way to go. Um, I only say that is because, you know, if we got Watson for say Justin Fields straight up, something like that, or maybe some draft picks, the bears don't have draft picks. So, um, you know, it would basically just be getting Watson and his outrageous salary, whatever it may be. I don't know what they guarantee money if we'd offer him the same type of thing, but, um, you know, we would be able to get some, uh, I, I would imagine we would have some cap space to sign some free agents, but maybe not the greatest. So, 
hard to say on, on all that. Um, and then, yeah, you know, having that on top of probably Khalil Mack's contract, if we were to go that route, probably not the best thing overall. So yeah, I, I wouldn't think that it, it was, it would, it would have been the best movie if we went that route. Got it. I mean, as far as my reaction, um, you know, just Deshaun going over there, I think what you're saying is right, just from where that roster is currently and where that franchise is currently too. It's, it seems like, you know, Baker had kind of a, you know, coming out party um, in the past season before this last one. So mm-hmm. I believe that'd be the, you know, the 2020, mm-hmm. 2021 season. I, I felt like he put up good numbers, made that progression to give Browns fans some hope that, hey, hey we were right there. Um, we took the Chiefs to, you know, a pretty deep uh, playoff game the year prior, and, and we were ready to kind of, you know, take it all the way past that. And I think the energy levels in Cleveland were, we're expecting that they were expecting him to kind of drop the hammer and become, you know, maybe not a Pat Mahomes type quarterback, but in the same sense, you know, why not be Russell Wilson for a year and, you know, show the league that you're, you know, you're worthy of carrying a team and, you know, kind of all fell apart last year. And, you know, looking at the talent there, like you said, um, you know, you got Cooper who just came in, you've got an amazing backfield with Chubb and Kareem Hunt and, you know, Nick Chubb is awesome and he's not going to stay awesome for the next four or five years. I mean, running backs, uh, you know, you want to get the most out of them when they're, you know, in their peak, in their prime. And, and those two, you know, are going to be great compliments to, to Watson um, if he plays football. And that's <laughs> yes. the biggest thing. But I, I do agree with you. It's worth the gamble. Totally worth the dice roll. Um, I think there's going to be mixed feelings in Cleveland from a, uh, from a fan and a person perspective, just in terms of, you know, what he's bringing with him, the kind of, you know, character, maybe flaws he has, even if, you know, legally none of this uh, holds any weight, it's still kind of a, a lot to swallow when you just think about, you know, our culture and what we're going through today in terms of, you know, recognizing that now and putting it, you know, more in the spotlight, which it, you know, ultimately deserves. But um, yeah, if we're just talking football, if he's on the field, even if he gets, you know, maybe a half season suspension or a quarter season suspension, it's still worth it because second he steps on the football field, that team's, you know, going to be elevated on the offensive side of the ball. Um, my only thought is, you know, looking at the um, AFC North, that's a strong division. Um, mm-hmm. It always has been. Uh, you got, you know, the Bengals coming off a Super Bowl appearance. Joe Burrow just got a, a few more, you know, extra linemen. Um you know, the Ravens are always going to, you know, draft well. They're going to build, you know, strong defenses. I think Lamar's got an extra gear in him that we're still waiting to see fully. Um, and then Pittsburgh is, you know, I think you said it last episode, Tomlin's never had a losing season. So, you know, it's going to segue us into our next quarterback. But in a lot of ways, um, you know, Cleveland's going to have their work cut out for him. It's not going to be, you know, uh, you know, the parade's not getting assembled just yet. So, right. We'll have to see what's uh, what's happening. But did you have any other thoughts on on Watson or or his incumbent? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just curious to see what this whole Davis Mills things on the Texans now. That that'll be interesting. <laughs> see where, uh, yeah, because he's going to get three first rounders. I think somebody actually posted a tweet, which was pretty interesting. It was like, oh yeah, the Texans were four and twelve uh, with Watson. I think in his uh, that year he threw for 4,800 yards. Um, and then, and then they, they also mentioned, oh yeah, Davis Mills was four and 13. Uh, so, I mean, even though he didn't play the, the full season and all that. Um, so I'm curious, yeah, it'll be interesting what happens. I think with the Texans, I think Mayfield, I've heard a lot of rumors. He might be going to, uh, I could see him actually do pretty well, or, or at least fair, you know, maybe for a stop gap for Seattle, um, you know, potentially over there. So you know, keep uh, Metcalf happy, <laughs> over, you know, or as happy as he can be, I guess. I don't know. Again, some of those is Drew Locke, the person. It's like, oh, we might as well toss Baker Mayfield in the mix. So, um, yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see how all those unfold uh, going forth. Yeah. For Mayfield, you got, you know, one-year contract, uh, 18 mil is what it's going to cost a team. I mean, I think that's pretty reasonable to bring him in for a flyer. Um doesn't sound like the Browns are going to be asking for too much. I think they just want him off the team at this point, which mm-hmm. it's unfortunate, but I, but I do think there's, you know, things, you know, lessons that he'll learn too on his way out of a, out of a position. Um, I think there's a lot more humility. I think that he probably could have displayed, you know, having been the quarterback for three years and 
you know, he was injured last year, but it's, it's still, you know, I think there's just a way you go about things. And um, mm. I think saying goodbye before you even traded was kind of <laughs> a head scratcher for me. I mean, it yeah. kind of didn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, no, I think he, he would be a good stopgap and a good um, coin toss. You know, if you're, if you're the Colts, if you're the Carolina Panthers, um, you know, like you're saying with Seattle, I, I heard they, they liked your lock, uh, which is, surprising I mean, I'm like, okay sure <laughs> if you're into that you know <laughs> yeah but uh yeah I mean I think um you know overall I think both sides Houston Cleveland they come away with the guys that you know they want Houston obviously you know is Davis Mills the guy no but I think getting away from the Watson situations mm-hmm. just just needed to be done and they brought in a ton of capital for mm-hmm. the drafts coming up so yeah look out for the Texans yeah and it's a deep draft yeah. Yeah. Another quarterback that we, uh, we passed over was, uh, was Tom Brady TV 12. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he's back in the sunshine state. He wants to play football. It didn't take him more than, uh, I believe a couple months to, uh, to flip on, on his, uh, retirement engagements. So what do you think about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And is this the last year of Tom Brady? I, I I don't know. I just I <laughs> I've I've given up on trying to figure out when is this guy gonna retire. It's kind of like yeah, the, the horror movies. You, you have never know if the bad guy is actually dead or not. Like just <laughs> on coming back and all that after all the speculation. So no, yeah. I mean, I think we'll. Uh, who knows if this is last year? I, I'm actually wondering if uh, Gronkowski is like, oh yeah, I'll come back or not. <laughs> you know, I think that might be. That might have more of a chance than say Brady. It'd be interesting to see if Gronkowski retires first. So, um, I mean, this definitely just pushes the the Bucks up, uh, you know, to be a contender again. You know, uh, they still have a lot a lot of the talent that they did previously. So, a lot of those pieces, maybe not as much as uh, as last year, though, is at least from what I'm seeing so far. Um, but yeah, the offseason still isn't done yet. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see the Bucks. I, I I I forget who I was mentioning as possible. I think I was. I mentioned Deshaun Watson to the Bucs. I think it was what I was looking at. So I, all those things, all, all the things that we were talking about then are just out the window. But yeah, I think Brady, uh, he, he's, he's, he's the GOAT. So I think he'll still, uh, he'll, he'll make them play up contenders uh, or championship contenders, Super Bowl contenders just in general. So, um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if anybody else comes along for the ride uh, for maybe his last ride, who knows? Yeah, I, you know, whether he plays after this year, we'll we'll have to see. I, the NFC is still kind of wide open. Um, you know, I don't want to go too far into it, but you know, the Packers trading their star wide out, yeah. that takes them down a notch for me. And to me, you keep Adams. Um, you know, Green Bay is walking right back into a one seat. It feels like just mm-hmm. with how teams are constructed. You know, because the NFC West, even without the Seahawks at full you know, power, they still have, you know, three dogs in that fight. And I don't know, it just seemed like you could just walk your way into a one spot. So now with Tampa, I wanted to just say, even if Brady comes back, I don't see him being a Super Bowl contender or Mm -hmm. it just feels like their rosters just, just needs a lot more still. I want to see some more on the secondary. Um, You know, I wasn't sure about the line because they lost a couple guys there and you lose a B um you know, even with all his antics, um, is, is Russell Gage the right third receiver now to kind of get them back into a, a Super Bowl type, you know, mindset? I'm just not sure. But uh, I've learned over the years to never doubt number 12. So um, we get into the playoffs, anything's possible, and we'll exactly. just see where it goes. But they're right in the fight now. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, it's a weak NFC, right? So I think I, I wonder if that kind of came to play. It'd be like, oh. I can do this, you know, <laughs> after seeing, oh, is it Ronaldo do a hat trick or something like that? <laughs> like, it was like, yeah, I can do this. We can, we can win the <laughs> NFC. So yeah, it will be interesting to see. I'm, I'm excited though. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I, the last quarterback that we had, um, we were both pretty much set on Trubisky going to the giants, but he signs a two year, $14 million deal with the Steelers. What do you think of the signing? What do you think of the fit? Um, will he be the quarterback of their future? 
Yeah, no, that's a great question. I know Mason Rudolph won't be. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> adamant. Um, I'd what love to see. I really like Trubisky uh, actually coming out of college and all that. Um, you know, I, I actually forced myself to watch the North Carolina games because like, oh, he could he could possibly uh, uh, be in the draft, maybe the second round or something like that, I think is what he was initially projected. Um, just he was a highly touted quarterback and all of a sudden start, got a chance now. Um yeah, strong arm mobility. I I, I think uh, he's a good contrast to what Roethlisberger was all about. Um, you know, especially in his later in, later in his career. Um, you know, he has mobility. He can throw the ball somewhat uh, and all that. Uh, but you know, I know they just lost Juju. So, but it's a deep uh, wide receiver draft, so they're probably looking into that. And then also, um, they still got Claypool. Um, and some, you know, they have, they still have some weapons and Mike Tomlin's always brought up uh, great defenses. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see if they can build around uh, Trubisky's strengths for, for a change compared to say Nagy. Uh, so, but I'm excited. I, I think Trubisky uh, has a lot of talent. It, it was definitely apparent. It seemed like uh, with Nagy and how he was managing the offenses without Trubisky that, you know, he just had no idea what he was doing or he had an idea, but it just was not working. So, um, yeah, let's see if Tomlin actually uh, can pull it off uh, there. Again, he's he's a winning. He's a winning coach. It's a winning franchise. So um, you have all that and then putting in a talented quarterback. Trubisky's a talented quarterback. He's just, uh, you know, maybe not the best reads, maybe not the best play calls, I think, what happened previously. So, yeah, it would be interesting and exciting to see. Uh, he's a great guy from <laughs> everything we've seen, at least. So definitely doesn't have that Watson uh, stigma towards him. So I'm, I, I, I would be cheering for him. I mean, I, I was actually thinking maybe Dwayne Haskins would push him for the starting job, <laughs> but, uh, not Rudolph. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think it's a good fit, um, you know, for where they're at right now. Um, I think Tomlin probably looked at the bears of a few years back and said, Hey, that guy, you know, put the key in, into that machine and, and, and got it rolling and got him, you know, uh, a first round buy. And, uh, he's capable of that at the very least, you know, you can't take that away from him. Um, is he the most talented quarterback in that division? No. Um, he's probably the fourth one <laughs> in that, like, <laughs> that pecking order. But, again, the weapons are there. Um, you got Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris. Um, like you're saying, with the draft, you can maybe add another weapon. Um, like the defense, I like the energy that, you know, T.J. Watt brings. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to th- – oh, Fitzpatrick is also another guy right. I mean, Patrick's another guy that I just love watching on, uh, you know, Sunday night football when it comes around or Monday nights, whenever they're on. Um, but in a lot of ways, I mean, that's always been their bread and butter and mm-hmm. you know, maybe Trubisky's their bridge guy for, for a year or two. You don't have to pay him that much. 14 right. million, even if he's your backup is fine. So again, if they want to go to the draft and, uh, you know, go to, um, the Liberty quarterback Malik Willis, um, outside of that, if it's, yeah, if it's not him, um, you know, perhaps this is just your, your free look and uh, you did your best for this year or the one coming up and mm-hmm. you kind of, you know, leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that I agree. You know, they, they do say it is a weaker draft. So it, it'll be interesting if they do want to draft Malik Harris or, you know, go after wide receiver or something like that. I think uh, if I were them, uh, I would probably just look into next year's draft. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you know, see if uh, somebody, one of the major quarterbacks uh, in the next year uh, will drop. Um, so yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see for sure. And with that, that wraps up the quarterback carousel updates for today. Uh, please find us on any social media that you have out there, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, we're also on Spotify anchor and we're getting set up with Apple. So with that, this is the ball and breakfast podcast, Wayne Patrick signing off. Thanks. <laughs>